What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Print, Shoot, Repeat. It is an honor to have you with me on this special day because we are covering a firearm that needs no introduction, and that is the FGC9 Mark II. But first, I gotta thank the channel sponsor for Print, Shoot, Repeat, and that is KAK Industry. KAK Industry is a leader in quality and affordability in all of the AR parts you could ever want. They are made right here in the USA. And if you use the code PSR at checkout at kakindustry.com, you can get 10% off your order. I highly recommend you check them out. They are the official channel sponsor for Print, Shoot, Repeat. Thank you, KAK. So what exactly is the FGC9 Mark II? The FGC9 Mark II is a 3D printed straight blowback 9x19 pistol caliber carbine intended for self-defense, and it can be made entirely at home using raw materials and 3D printing. The whole goal behind this project was to make a gun that anyone could build in their own home. Now, the fact that this can be homemade is pretty incredible, and that is what makes this gun so extremely important. People who are being oppressed by dictators and authoritarian regimes, this was for them. Since its release in 2021, this firearm has popped up in numerous countries across the world, including of course here in the US where it's legal for the most part to make your own firearm, but also in areas like Myanmar where it is extremely hard to find firearms parts and there are currently rebels fighting the dictatorship in Myanmar with FGC9s and we have seen videos to prove it. Fighting oppressive regimes, tyranny and dictators is what this gun was intended to be made for, and Jay Stark made that very clear. Unfortunately, as you may know, Jay Stark, the co-creator of this firearm and author of the guide on how to build it, died very suddenly last year as a result of some health complications after he was raided. I would check out Plastic Defense, the documentary by Popular Front. If you wanna know more about him as a person, it really goes into his beliefs and who he was. I believe the legacy of Jay Stark and who he was will go down in history for many, many years to come. This firearm marks an important transition into homemade defense. We are at a point where homemade defense is becoming more and more accessible to more and more people across the world. So let's talk a little bit about my particular FGC9. So all of the components here that you see on the outside are printed. Even the bolt carrier is printed. The only parts that are not printed are the bolt, the springs. So there is a buffer spring in here and there is a spring in the magazine and there is a firing pin that's metal and there's a barrel obviously that's metal. My particular FGC9, I included a KAK flash can. It's not a suppressor. It is just for aesthetic reasons mostly, but it does help keep the blast going forward. There is an optic on here. This is a hollow sun HS403C. Um, you can throw whatever you want in there. The charging handle is also a metal piece and component, but other than that, really, this thing is all 3D printed. Now, the fire control unit can be 3D printed. It is a standard mil-spec AR-15 fire control group. Mine is not printed, um, but there is plans out there for you to print your own. The pistol grip on here is an AR pattern pistol grip. So you can put any AR pistol grip you want on there. The magazine is a Glock magazine. It is a 3D printed 25 round magazine. And if you didn't know already, this build is meant to be used with PLA Plus. I use Polymaker PLA Pro specifically. There is a link to it in the description of this video. It does help me out and help the channel. So the Mark II design specifically added a few different features. It added the ability to slap the gun, which you know I love to do. So it's got this non-reciprocating charging handle right here, and you can pull it back until you wanna slap it, because it's got this notch here, just like an MP5. And you can slap it just like an MP5. It's got an ambi mag release here. You can press it with your thumb, or you can press it with your pointer finger on this side. I should note there are some metal parts in this build that I substituted as kind of a luxury. They are made by Riptide Rails. This is metal, this mag release is metal, the feed ramp is metal, and the ejector is metal. Now normally all of those parts are printed, but in this case I 
wanted to put some metal parts in there uh, just because it's kind of, I wanted it to be a little bit of a bougie FGC9 Mark II and those parts do not need to be metal and they can be made easily with printing, but I like me some metal parts. So thanks Riptide. You can also get a buffer tube adapter that allows you to adapt a standard AR buffer tube and Riptide makes that too. The brace here on the back is patterned after a shockwave blade, which of course KAK sells. Uh, this is a very small, tiny little brace here. It's even smaller than the KAK blade. So this is definitely not a stock. Therefore this in the United States is a pistol. There is a stock normally that comes with this, but because of our regulations and SBR laws, I put a brace on here. Now this thing just comes off like, just like that. And of course, as you can see, I rattle can this thing and put my own little creative artistic touch there. Let me know what you think of the rattle can job. Now we have M-lock on the front here on the handguard, and we have a Picatinny rail right here if you wanted to mount a light of some kind. Um, there is lots of different things you could put on here. Uh, you could put a little hand stop on the bottom, but it is M-lock and it is a 1913 rail. So the bolt here is made out of metal on the inside, but the carrier itself, which is reciprocating with the bolt is printed, which is pretty incredible. And that just kind of holds that bolt in and you JB weld it in there. So that's pretty awesome. Now there's a sling loop right here for a single point sling, which is really nice. And there is a little pocket here that you can put all sorts of stuff. The cap, and I lost it a while back, so I need to print another one, but this is new and pretty cool. So I have to give a big shout out to MAF Corp I sourced the parts for this build. They are chimes. What's your opinion on chimes? And the barrel chime here is about four and a half inches. And the bolt and spring also are chimes. And I gotta give a big shout out to MAF Corp. So thank you, MAF Corp. Um, I sourced them myself, but they are the homies. And they are distributors of all sorts of wonderful chimes. So check MAF out. Now, before we get into how it was to shoot, I do have to make a disclaimer. The reason why I'm just releasing this video now is I've had a little bit of issues with the FGC9 Mark II, particularly feeding and out of battery stuff. And it is very important to note that in the manual, they specifically have a whole section about out of battery discharges. Now, what is an out of battery discharge? It is when the bolt doesn't completely seat the round and the firing pin strikes the primer and then you have a detonation that is not fully in battery, which means it goes pew out the side, usually the ejection port. And in the case of a metal gun, that really doesn't make a big deal. Sometimes you have crazy catastrophic out of batteries with metal guns, but with a plastic gun, it can be a little bit more intense and the receiver can crack. Sound right. With that said, I had an out of battery myself and I had my hands right here and I was totally fine. I just felt a little bit of a bump there and uh, we got it on video. I will say the designers of this firearm intended for there to be a wide variety of tolerances when you made this gun. So the sacrifice in doing so is that hopefully you allow more people to get a functioning build. And you sacrifice a little bit of safety when you do that. So the goal is to make this gun work and not for necessarily it to be the most entirely safe gun in the world. Now, if I was gonna go into battle and I had a choice between this and, and an MP5 or this and a Scorpion, I'm taking the MP5 and I'm taking the Scorpion. But this was not what this gun was intended for. This was intended for people who had literally zero firearms and zero ability to acquire firearms. And the intention behind making this was so that those people could have a way to defend themselves. So a functioning gun is always going to be better than a non-functioning gun. And the designers intended for this to be a functioning gun. So they sacrificed a little bit of safety for that. So this gun can fire out of battery. Now with that said, this gun can be completely functional and made flawless. And it is for me right now, flawless. It has been running absolutely beautifully. So before we get into the shooting impressions of the FGC 9 Mark II, I have to make a big note and shout out to Ivan the Troll for his work on the barrel section of the guide for this. So 
This weapon is intended to be made with a ECM rifled barrel. Now, what is ECM rifling? Well, it is electrochemical machining, and it's a process where you can rifle a barrel in your own bathtub, essentially. It doesn't require any crazy tools. It just requires some electricity. It's a fascinating process, which I suggest you check out on Ivan's YouTube channel. And he has lots of information about ECM rifling. It's really cool and I suggest you check that out. I am not gonna be the best resource for all that information, but I would highly recommend checking out both the guide and Ivan's YouTube channel to learn more. So, how is this thing to shoot? Well, it is kind of bulky compared to some PCCs, but it is actually, like I said, it's 4.8 pounds. It's not too heavy at all, actually, and the sling mount here, the single point sling, worked great. Uh, I was shooting this thing all day, I probably put Man, it was probably close to 500 rounds through this thing and just really ran the piss out of it. The bolt is a heavy bolt. It's a chunky boy. So the mass coming back and forth, like any nine millimeter PCC, like an AR9, for example, it's going to be very similar to an AR9. It's actually probably, I would say, maybe a little bit less recoil feeling than an AR9, depending on what kind of buffer you have in there. It really is a joy to shoot just because of what it is. It's a entirely, almost entirely 3D printed PCC that's a nine millimeter and pretty insane thing to think about this being shitted out in your living room and now you're shooting it and it's shooting nine millimeter and it's working and it's accurate and you can slap it. I mean, fuck yeah, look at that. I mean, it's just, it's just so satisfying. I love it so much. These floral good times chimes are a great way to get into the build. And it's just a extremely fun gun to run around and LARP with. Luckily, we live in a free country where we don't have to worry about repressive regimes and dictators, right now at least. And I can just LARP on the range with my FGC9 Mark II. Now, like I said, you could put a 16 inch barrel in here and legally speaking, put a stock on the back and that could kind of be cool. The cool thing is there are all sorts of remixes on Thingiverse with airsoft accessories and stuff. There's even actually an airsoft version of this gun that you can print. So if you are in Europe and you want to 3D print an airsoft version of this, you can. Be careful because now they're seizing FGC9s left and right in European countries. We've seen raids where they've uncovered these. On the black market in some European countries, these can go for like $2,500, which is absurd because it really is not the greatest PCC. I mean, I, like I said, I would choose an MP5, an MPX, I would choose a Scorpion, I would choose like a KP9, uh, all sorts of guns over this. But at the end of the day, this is intended to be made without any complex knowledge about gunsmithing or complex tools and it can be made as such in your living room. And like I said, the barrel can be ECM rifled in a bathtub, which is pretty damn incredible. So the legacy of the FGC9, what does it mean? The cool thing about the 3D printed gun community is that the open source nature of the file sharing leads to a lot of innovation. And what we saw with Durwood's Shuddy AP9 uh, which led into the Mark I and Mark II of the FGC-9 is really a example of how knowledge is spread and the power of the internet and the power of being able to 3D print your own personal defense. So just like the Ludi submachine gun, I think the FGC-9 will go down in history as a game changer when it came to personal defense weapons and particularly homemade guns and 3D printed guns. So really, that's all I gotta say about the FGC9 Mark II. If you wanna learn more, like I said, there's an extensive guide and PDF written by none other than Jay Stark himself, and it is out there on the internet. And like I said, you don't have to download the files. If you just are curious about it, you can check it out. If you wanna learn more about who he was, I would highly suggest you check out the popular front doc called Plastic Defense. And may J Stark's honor and his innovation and his passion continue to inspire people around the world. And I hope this weapon continues to be used to fight dictatorships and atrocities and is able to give people who don't have the power to fight back the power to fight back. 
That's all I got today for another episode of Print, Shoot, Repeat. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So it's got this non-reciprocating charging handle right here, which has a little notch similar to an MP5 where you can pull that charging handle back and keep it locked back until 